How does a mouse build a burrow? It takes a little bit more than just elbow grease to build a home. In the case of Peromiscus mice, it's all in the genes. One has to be born a master mouse architect. In a recent study, Jesse Weber, Brant Peterson and Hobie Hogstra set out to unearth the genetic basis of mouse burrowing. They looked at two related species of mice, Peromiscus polyonotus and Peromiscus maniculatus. Polyonotus inhabits the open fields and beaches of the southeastern US. It builds an excellent burrow with a long entrance tunnel and an ingenious escape tunnel. Maniculatus, on the other hand, lives in prairies and forests all over the US. It builds a more humble burrow with a short entrance tunnel and no escape tunnel. Now, while polyonotus mice are impressively consistent, they build burrows of the same shape and same length wherever they find themselves. The research team also studied polyonotus mice and maniculatus mice in a lab setting. These captive mice continued to build burrows typical of their species even though, as lab-reared mice, they had never encountered burrowing before. This suggests that burrowing behavior is genetically controlled. To generate more burrows for their study, the team crossed a captive polyonotus with a captive maniculatus to produce a hybrid F1. These F1s built polyonotus-style burrows, indicating that the polyonotus alleles are genetically dominant. They overrule the recessive genetic input from maniculatus. Finally, the team backcrossed the hybrid F1 generation with the parental maniculatus mice. The result, lots of variation in backcross burrows. Backcross mice were genetic mosaics, part polyonotus, part maniculatus. So the backcross mice that built polyonotus style burrows must be carrying the critical burrow determining components of the polyonotus genome. The team used a technique called QTL mapping that correlates the presence or absence of pieces of polyonotus DNA with polyonotus style burrowing in the backcross mice. This allowed the team to find the burrowing genes in the paramiscus genome. So, what came out of all of this? To begin with, the team noted that tunnel length and the presence of escape tunnels in mice are weakly correlated. These traits slightly add together to create the burrowing behavior that we see. Complex behaviors may therefore be the sum of multiple simple behaviors. Secondly, the team found that three genomic regions are responsible for tunnel length, with each region adding about three centimeters of length to the entrance tunnel. And, well, this is the kicker. A single genomic region determines whether or not a mouse builds an escape tunnel. So the conclusion is that burrowing is governed by just four genomic regions. Wow! Four regions to dictate such a complex, such an elaborate behavior? Who would have guessed that it only takes a few genes to become a master mouse architect?